ругались, не, не кричали друг, но внутри, я думаю, что да, мы всегда ругались. Мы всегда были не согласны друг с другом. Но перед 72-м годом я никогда этого не высказывала. А после 72-го года я начала просто это говорить. И для него это было неприемлемо, наверное. Перед тем, как тренировать ее, каждый раз она строила себя дом. Вот такие ой, знаете, убеждаю себя, Сам, самоубеждением занимался. Что раз уж я ее взял, я, конечно, должен с ней обращаться очень ласково, очень хорошо. Примерно так, как вот в цирке обращаются эти дрессировщики с обезьянками. I never see and he respect Olga like person. For him, Olga was just gymnast, just person who doing his idea, you know. I never saw that he like her. You know, he all the time talked with her, kind of rude, make her like pinch uh, some word, like I, I didn't like. For me, so many times I was like shocked. Он стал меня бить, когда я стала развиваться. Он ревновал меня. Он думал, что у меня есть кто-то. Не начали э, грудь расти, не начал меняться все. У меня начала фигура другая быть. А он замечал, что я не девочка уже. И он от ревности, он просто от ревности бил меня. Иногда, что я его не слушаю, что я имею свое слово. И один раз я запомню это навсегда. Point of everybody in the gym he beat me. He broke my hair. Один раз в жизни было. Но этого достаточно было, чтобы она возненавидела меня на всю жизнь. Ах, он меня, меня президенты руку жали мне, там миллиардеры руку целовали мне, а он мне пощечину дал такой секой. Вот так-то. Olga and Knish finally parted company in early 1975. She went on to train with Knish's wife, Tamara Alexeyeva. Я была счастлива, что я убежала от него. И снова я начала работать с нормальным отношением, как должно быть, между гимнасткой the following year was spent in Grodna preparing for the next big event, the Montreal Olympics. Expectations were high, but it was soon clear that Olga without Knish was not the same Olga. In the end, she only managed one team gold and one silver medal on the beam. For the audience, the novelty was wearing off. Besides, a new star was being born. Nadia Komenich. Another faultless display from Komenich. Coming with championship performance. Ten. The score that we said made Olympic history only days ago, now becoming commonplace for Nadia Komenich. Последний год я уже работала на последнем из дня рождения просто. Я не хотела работать, я хотела уйти, у меня были стрессы, я уходила, я приходила опять. То, что произошло со мной после Монреаля. Я просто ушла из гимнастики навсегда. Six months after Montreal, Olga retired, but she left her mark on the sport. Since Olga, gymnastics is no longer one of the more obscure Olympic sports. It's now one with some of the highest ratings on TV. But there was also another effect. After Olga, the pressure for more elaborate and risky routines increased dramatically. And so did the pressure to be smaller, younger and thinner. She changed gymnastics and she changed gymnasts. There are no grown-up gymnasts anymore. There are no mature young women who, who look like women doing gymnastics. 
doing gymnastics. The sport has changed. You cannot win if your body has reached maturity. And I think that is very sad. We did have a sort of anorexia problem in gymnastics, and no doubt about that at all. You know, um, you know, people were stopped from, you know, eating as they would like to eat, because the lighter you are, the better. Despite rumours of infertility caused by the training regime, all six members of the 1972 Soviet team went on to have children. Olga herself had a son, Richard, in 1979, a year after her marriage to a Belarusian pop star, Leonid Bortkevich. For the next 12 years, she lived in Minsk, where she worked, among other things, as a sports administrator. Then, in 1986, 200 miles down the road, disaster struck. The Russians have revealed little during the day of the extent of the accident at a nuclear power station in the Ukraine, but it is clear that this is a major disaster. After Chernobyl, Olga and her family decided to leave the Soviet Union forever, and in 1991 they moved to the United States. Today, Olga lives in South Jersey and trains young Olympic hopefuls at the Flyers Gymnastics Academy in Hamilton. Olga may be a few years older, but she can still show them a thing or two. Within a few months of settling into her new coaching job, Olga suddenly quit after some of her pupils complained about her tyrannical training methods, a telling twist after her experiences with her own coach. Earlier this year, Olga and Leonid divorced, and Olga has since remarried. She now lives in a suburb of Atlanta in a house dedicated to her Olympic glory. Okay. This is Munich gold medal. This is Montreal gold medal. This is Munich silver medal. This is Montreal gold medal. This, I have all four gold medals and two silver. This is just two gold, two silver. Two gold medals on the museum in Moscow and in Grodno. When I got from Munich, they said to me, you have three gold, can you give us one? I say, okay. <laughs> That's it. This is last time when I saw my gold medal. It's hard to think of a sport with a shorter career span than gymnastics. And it's hard to think of a sport where the difference between the time spent training and the time spent performing is so great. Olga Korbut spent seven years training for four days in Munich. Yet it was those four days that transformed her from an ordinary gymnast into an icon of her era. Поражать, восхищать. И вот это вот я, я думаю, мне кажется, что я это сделала. Nicomara 